happy Thursday. In case you haven't noticed, I'm not filming in my living room today. I'm filming in my kitchen. And that gives you a clue about what our poetry is about today. Today we're going to start off by reading a poem about something that I have in my kitchen. And then I'm going to challenge you to write your own poem about something in your kitchen. This first poem that I'm going to read you is by Constance Levy, but I'm not going to tell you the title. Instead, I'm going to act it out and I want you to figure out the title of this poem by figuring out what this poem is all about. All in all, it's a small football covered in alligator leather wrapped around a round slick seed surrounded by yellow grain butter. Remove the seed, it's the butter you'll need, and to make it even better, season it, mash it, spread it thick over a crisp tortilla chip. And happy guacamole! Did you figure out what the poem is about? I'm gonna read it again, this time I'm gonna show it to you. All in all, it's a small football covered in alligator leather wrapped around a slick seed surrounded by yellow green butter. Remove the seed, it's the butter you'll need. And to make it even better, season it, mash it, spread it thick over a crisp tortilla chip. In case you haven't guessed yet, this poem is about the avocado. So the poet just took something really basic, like a food that you might have in your kitchen, and they wrote a poem. And the way they did that was by adding some rhythm to it. One way to add rhythm to a poem is to put in what are called line breaks. So if you look, the author doesn't write their words all the way across the page. Instead, the author puts breaks in their poem. So, I figured, why not write a poem about the grapefruit, one of my favorite things in my kitchen. So I'm thinking about this grapefruit, and I'm noticing that, okay, the author described the avocado as being covered in alligator leather. I thought that was really cool. So I'm gonna observe my grapefruit and I'm gonna think about all the different ways that I could describe it in a poem. Then I'll write it down with some line breaks. So, it's a big sphere, orangish yellow. You can peel it and eat it with just your hands or scoop it with a spoon. Let me see if I can put some rhythm to that by adding line breaks. It's a big sphere. Hmm, is there another way I could describe that? Like the author said alligator leather to describe the avocado? It's a sphere like the globe. How about that? It's a sphere. And then I'm gonna add a line break here. It's a sphere like a globe. And then I said orangish yellow. How could I say that in a way that has a rhythm? A little orange, a little yellow. A little orange, a little yellow. Hmm. Let's see, does this have some rhythm yet? It's a sphere, like a globe, a little orange, a little yellow. You can eat it with your hands. You can eat it. That's not where I wanted my line break, so I'm gonna erase that and write it again. Because I'm noticing my poem has this rhythm. You can eat it with your hands or scoop it with a spoon. All 
All right, let's read this. Let's feel the rhythm of my poem. It's a sphere like a globe, a little orange, a little yellow. You can eat it with your hands or scoop it with a spoon. So did you guys notice what I did? To write that poem about my fruit, all I did was observe it, look at it closely, and then when I was writing about it, I added in some line breaks to add a little bit of rhythm. I also noticed that rereading as I was writing helped me to come up with a rhythm. The best thing about poetry is there's not really a wrong way to do it. So your follow-up work today is to go to your kitchen and find something that you want to write a poem about. Give it a try. Just give it a little rhythm.